हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लासेस ऑफ सेमीकंडक्टर डिवाइसेस वी स्टडीड अबाउट द कंटिन्यूटी इक्वेशंस इन अ पी एन जंक्शन सो फ्रॉम इक्विलिब्रियम वी हैव स्टार्टेड द टॉपिक ऑफ नॉन इक्विलिब्रियम एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक दैट इज द रेक्टिफायर इक्वेशन for a pn junction so here under this mainly we are going to deal with the iv relation that is current voltage relationship or you can say current density how it is going to vary with respect to the voltage and also some details about saturation current so under this topic we are going to discuss about the properties both at equilibrium and in the presence of biasing voltage so first we will deal with the equilibrium case and how it is going to differ with respect to forward bias and reverse bias because the large concentration of carriers will be present at the junction when it is originally formed and diffusion and all takes place so in detail about the formation of pn junction we have already discussed so let's start our today's class where we are going to discuss about the current voltage relation and saturation current so here current we are going to discuss with respect to the current density because that will be more powerful tool to explain about the semiconductor devices so we need to consider all the contribution across the pn junction and the net current density that can be derived from four components so if we have a pn junction one side is p type semiconductor and another side is n type semiconductor p type semiconductor means majority charge carriers are holes and minority charge carriers are electrons whereas for n type semiconductor it is reverse way round that is majority charge carriers are electrons and minority charge carriers are holes so when we are considering current density it is indirectly explaining details about the current current is nothing but the flow of charges and in a semiconductor or as such in a semiconductor device like a pn junction we know that both electrons and holes are the charge carriers so when electron and hole are going across the junction we can get different types of currents so we need to consider all these currents or current densities to understand about the net effect so first the current density j1 and we need to know that this is due to the flow of minority charge carriers that is electrons in the conduction band of p region to the conduction band of n region i hope you have gone through the energy level diagrams so if you have gone through that this is going to be very easier for you however we will discuss it later on so semiconductor it is characterized by certain energy gap which differentiates between valence band and conduction band j1 corresponds to the flow of minority charge carriers that is electrons from the conduction band of p region to the conduction band of n region and since the electrons are negatively charged the conventional current will flow in opposite direction that is from n to p region so this is the direction of j1 so j1 flows from right towards left and this is with respect to flow of electrons then moving to the second is j2 the majority electrons in the conduction band of n region flows to the conduction band of p region and this gives rise to the current density j2 which will be flowing from left that is from p towards n because electrons are again negatively charged so current direction is going to be opposite of that of electron moment next one is j3 the majority charge carriers in valence band of p region 
so that is nothing but holes these also can flow to the valence band of n region and this gives rise to the current density g3 flowing from left towards right so direction is from p towards n because it is representing the movement of holes which are positively charged so the direction of current is also going to be with the direction of the holes so that is from p towards n and finally j4 so the minority holes whichever are present in the valence band of n region they also can flow to valence band of p region giving rise to the current density j4 which is flowing from right towards left so again the direction of flow and the direction of current density is going to remain same because holes are positively charged so these are the four current densities which will decide the net effect and thus the net current density will be the contribution from all this that is total current density j is equals to minus j1 plus j2 plus j3 minus j4 so negative sign indicates the opposite direction and also you can remember both are because of the minority charge carrier flow j1 is with respect to minority electrons from p towards n j4 is minority holes from n towards p so collecting the terms we can write net current density is equals to j2 plus j3 minus of j1 plus j4 let us call this as equation number 1 and our next task will be to find out what is j1 j2 j3 and j4 so here we are going to again make use of our previous knowledge and let's continue towards it so first is j1 j1 is going to be very small and it is almost constant mainly because of three reason first one is minority electrons are very less that is the minority charge carriers in the conduction band of p region their number is very very less because majority charge carriers are holes and their number is going to be dominating on the number of electrons so if the charge carriers are less it means that the current density is also less second reason is the motion of electrons in bulk material is not affected by applied voltage so this is again indirectly the reason is their number only and finally third one is potential is always downwards so due to all these reasons we can say that j1 is very small and with respect to change in potential it is almost constant there is no much variation moving to the second one j2 j2 is a function of potential because it is due to the majority charge carriers that is electron flow from the conduction band of n side towards the conduction band of p side so here it is a function of potential because without potential some things are complicated so with respect to energy level diagram we have already understood and again we will glance over it and this j2 is given by c1 exponential of minus evt by kt which we are calling as equation number 2 here c1 is a constant and vt is the potential when junction is biased so when we say it is a function of potential means biasing is done so in a pn junction we have studied about two types of biasing one is forward bias and another one is reverse bias so for forward biasing we can say that the potential vt is going to be equal to vb minus v that is the barrier potential minus of the potential which is applied and the reverse bias potential vt will be equal to vb plus v that is the barrier potential plus the external potential which is applied so here we can observe in forward bias the potential is going to decrease whereas in reverse bias the potential is going to increase so as such we have understood it based on the energy level diagram 
So just to compare at equilibrium means when no external potential is applied we can observe that this is the Fermi level where towards the P region we have all the acceptors present just above the valence pan and here towards N region we have all the donor impurities just below the conduction band. So when the junction is formed we can observe this nature of energy band diagram. Whereas when the forward biasing is done, here it is clearly observed that the barrier potential is decreasing whereas in reverse bias condition we can observe the barrier potential increases because along y direction you have the electron energy which in turn we can say it as potential. So as a effect for equilibrium that is zero biasing condition there is no connection of external potential. So due to the concentration gradient there will be a barrier potential created in between P and N region and the details about the contact potential we have already studied in our previous class. So this is the energy gap and when you move on to the forward biasing case we can observe that the forward bias potential is decreasing. So potential barrier minus forward bias potential that is external potential into Q gives the corresponding energy. So your depletion region width is also going to get reduced and similarly if we move on for the reverse bias case that is P side is connected to the N terminal or negative terminal of the battery whereas N side of the PN junction is connected to positive of the battery. In that case we can observe that the barrier potential is going to increase. So reverse bias potential will be equal to barrier potential that is what is there at equilibrium plus the potential which is applied using the battery. So here we can clearly see that the depletion layer or depletion region width is also increasing, potential is also increasing and corresponding energy is also going to increase. So if you need to make charges flow from one section to another section you need more amount of energy to overcome this barrier. So details about forward and reverse bias with respect to the energy level diagrams are already considered. You can just go through it. So the relevance here is to explain how potential is going to affect the current density. And similarly J3 is a function of potential since it is with respect to the majority charge carriers that is holes and it is given as J3 is equals to C2 into exponential of minus EVT by K into T. Let us call it as equation number 3 where C2 is a constant, VT is again the same, E is the charge of electron, K is Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature. So these two J2 and J3 are the functions of potential and these are due to the majority charge carriers only whereas J4 is your saturation current which is again due to the motion of minority holes. So J1 and J4 represent the flow of minority charge carriers. So these are the four components of current density and to be more clear with respect to these and before finding out the constants C1 and C2 let us elaborate some details about equilibrium and biasing condition. So as such if the junction has to be formed we know that we need a p-type semiconductor and a n-type semiconductor. As such the energy level diagram is somewhat like this. p-type semiconductor, valence band energy, conduction band energy. Then if it is intrinsic semiconductor we can say that Fermi level lies exactly or approximately at the middle of the energy gap. But when it is a p-type semiconductor it is doped with trivalent impurities 
which means there are more number of acceptors and acceptor level lies just above the valence band. When you go for n type semiconductor we know that donor impurities are added so electrons are getting added into the crystal structure due to which the Fermi level is going to lie just below the conduction band where the donor level is present. So the Fermi level is just in between the conduction band and the donor level and here the Fermi level is in between the acceptor level and valence band at absolute zero. So as temperature increases Fermi level is also going to change. So it goes on increasing and moves to the intrinsic nature. Here it goes on decreasing and moves to intrinsic nature. So when studying the properties of semiconductors we have studied about the effect of impurities as well as effect of temperature on semiconductors. So when p-n junction is formed that is p-type and n-type semiconductors are brought together. So as such if you just join it you can observe there is a huge difference in the energies. So when a junction is formed it should be a balanced one or it should come back to the equilibrium. So in P type and N type we can see that opposite natures are present. So in P type majority charge carriers are holes which are positive charges and in N type there is a majority charge carrier as electron which are negatively charged particle. So there is a huge concentration gradient due to which diffusion takes place across the junction. So when diffusion is going to take place electrons from N region diffuse towards P region and the holes apparently are observed as to be diffusing towards N region. Due to which where the junction is formed we can observe positive charges towards N type and the negative charges are developed towards P type which gives rise to the depletion region. So this depletion region is acting like a barrier and it is having certain potential which is called as barrier potential. At equilibrium the Fermi level is like this what you can observe here because Fermi level is a very important aspect and you can't say that in some part it is somewhere and the energy corresponding to the Fermi level is something else in other part of the same system. So always equilibrium or balancing should be there. But when external potential is applied that is if you want to study about effect of biasing two types of biasing forward and reverse. In forward biasing the positive terminal of the battery is connected to P side and negative to the N side. In that case what will happen? Because of the external potential which is applied, the holes will move to the junction from the positive side. They will move towards the N side and in return the electrons are also going to move towards the P side of the depletion region. Because when potential is applied, we know that current is going to flow in this direction positive towards negative that is field and holes will be along the field and electrons will be opposing it. So motion of electrons will be from negative to positive. So the same thing happens when forward biasing is done. So the presence of the contact potential impedes the flow of diffusion currents. The corresponding electric field which is created due to the accumulation of these charges is going to act as opposition to the flow of electrons and holes but when forward biasing is done extra potential is given. So if we look from the point of view of the energy band we can say that the N region has been raised by an amount of E into Vt that is initially we can observe the difference in the energy that is the contact potential Vb into E gives the corresponding energy. 
but now because of forward biasing because of the movement of the charge carriers this n region is been raised so the energy is going to get raised which indirectly reduces the barrier potential and thus the width of the depletion region and due to this we can say that there is a comparatively easier flow of charge carriers across the junction that's why the current is going to flow for forward biasing whereas in reverse bias we know that negative terminal of the battery is connected to p side and positive terminal is connected to n side of the pn junction so here we can observe the reverse bias connection and its effect on the edges of the energy bands in which we see that the height of the potential is now increased by certain amount of e vt where vt is vb plus v and here again there is a recombination and generation of currents and here there is again recombination as well as generation currents for both holes and electrons so if we move in detail with respect to the procedure and the corresponding currents equilibrium non equilibrium then we can say that the generation fluxes are again unaffected by vb that is the barrier potential because the junction field is still strong enough to accomplish the sweeping whereas on the other hand as the height of the potential barrier increases the generation flux for both electrons and hole decreases and that factor is what is exponential of minus e vt by kbt and these are some of the details about the formation of a junction and the effect of biasing so then moving to the value of c1 and c2 so as such at equilibrium we can say that potential is equals to 0 based on which we can say vt is equals to vb that is the total potential is equals to barrier potential and here vb is due to j1 and j4 that is minority charge carriers whereas vt is due to j2 and j3 that is due to majority charge carriers so at equilibrium to find out the value of c1 and c2 we can take j1 is equals to j2 and j3 is equals to j4 so with respect to conduction band and valence band so in equilibrium we say j1 and j2 are equal to each other that is flow of charges as such we have j2 is a function of potential and j2 is equals to c1 exponential of minus e vt by kt vt is vb at equilibrium because external potential v is equals to 0 thus we can say j1 is equals to c1 exponential of minus e vb by kt because j1 is equals to j2 as such this is the expression for j2 but instead of vt we have written vp because v is equals to 0 so if we need to find out what is the value of c1 we just need to bring this exponential towards lhs so c1 will be equal to j1 divided by exponential of minus e vb by kt that will be equal to exponential of e vb by kt so we are bringing the denominator term to numerator so e raised to minus x will become e raised to x calling it as equation number 4 which gives the value of c1 see why we are finding out the constants because final equation whatever we get we need it with respect to all standard constants and the potential so similarly we will consider j3 is equals to j4 which is the current density corresponding to the valence band we have j3 is equals to c2 exponential of minus e vt by kt and here j3 is equals to j4 so substituting j4 is equals to c2 exponential of minus e instead of vt we have vb because v is equals to 0 divided by kt similarly 
on simplification we get c2 is equals to j4 into exponential of e vb by kt calling it as equation number 5. So now finding out what are the actual values of current densities by substituting equation 4 and 5. As such we have equation number 2 as j2 is equals to c1 exponential of minus e vt by k into t. Substituting the value of c1 from equation number 4 we get j2 is equals to j1 e raised to e v b by k t into the same term which on simplifying we get j2 is equals to j1 exponential of e v b minus v t divided by k t. So we have expressed j2 as a function of j1 because we know that j1 is independent of potential or there is no huge variation. So with respect to this constant we are defining j2. So it is similar to that of a equation corresponding to a wave. So where we just write the amplitude or displacement for explaining the motion of the wave as amplitude into the phase. So in the same manner here j1 into exponential of the function of potential. Let us call it as equation number 6 and similarly we are going to find out what is j3. Equation 3 is j3 is equals to c2 exponential of minus e v t by k t. Substituting the value of c2 from equation number 5 and simplifying we get j3 is equals to j4 exponential of e into v b minus v t divided by k into t call it as equation number 7 and after finding out j2 with respect to j1 j3 with respect to j4 we can go for the net effect so adding equation number 6 and equation number 7 we get j2 plus j3 is equals to j1 plus j4 into exponential of e v b minus v t by k t because exponential term both are same that can be taken common then you will have j1 plus j4 and we will call this as equation number 8. So one part of equation number 1 is over that is j2 plus j3 and that is again in terms of j1 and j4. So finally we will substitute this equation number 8 in equation number 1 which gives the net current density j is equals to j2 plus j3 minus j1 plus j4. So in place of j2 plus j3 we will substitute j1 plus j4 into exponential of e v b minus v t by k into t. So again we can take j1 plus j4 common. So by taking that outside we can write j is equals to j1 plus j4 into exponential of this minus 1. And in this equation we will consider j1 plus j4 is equals to j0. And this is the equation which is known as rectifier equation for pn junction. Where this j0 is called as saturation current density. Because we know that j0 is nothing but j1 plus j4. Both are because of minority charge carriers which remain almost constant or independent of potential. So as it is not variable we can say it is saturated and the corresponding current density is called as saturation current density and its corresponding current I0 will be saturation current because we know that current density is nothing but current per unit area. And if we keenly observe this we can say that the quantity I0 corresponding to this J0 is nothing but the magnitude of reverse bias current and the property of that is saturation only and if we simplify this Vb minus Vt, Vt is Vb plus V for reverse bias and Vb minus V for forward bias. So Vb and Vb will get cancelled so it is a function of external potential itself. And thus we can say that potential 
is taken to be positive for forward bias whereas it is taken to be negative for reverse bias because for forward bias if we observe it will be vb minus vb minus v so vb vb will get cancel minus of minus v will be plus so potential is going to be positive whereas for reverse bias we know that the total potential is going to increase so that will be equal to vb plus v so minus of plus is minus only so negative when reverse biased and the current versus voltage characteristics for a junction which illustrates the rectifying property is shown here where the first quadrant explains about forward bias condition whereas third quadrant represents reverse bias so in forward bias condition we have two graphs one is experimental and the one is theoretical similarly for reverse bias main thing we need to observe here is the scale in forward bias condition very less amount of voltage is enough for the flow of charges that is current and current will be in terms of milliamp but if you go for reverse bias condition the current is in terms of micro ampere that is 10 to the power minus 6 ampere and just for a very less amount of current we need more amount of voltage voltage is also 0 to 50 100 and here we can observe the saturation property that is nothing but reverse bias current which is also called as saturation current this is the theoretical one but experimentally there will be some variation however the current will be in terms of microamp itself because the potential barrier is increasing that is the width of the depletion region increases due to which it is very difficult for the charge carriers to flow however this current is due to the minority charge carriers which will pass the depletion region and if you want to know about the magnitude a typical value of reverse current density is 10 microampere per centimeter square whereas the forward current is going to depend greatly on voltage it is depending on the voltage that is potential and typically the value is almost 100 milliampere for a biasing voltage of 0.2 volt so just for 0.2 volt we can observe a huge amount of current flow and here we can observe there is a drastic increase in the current so we need to note that if the reverse voltage is made very very high then finally there will be electric breakdown which will occur and at certain point or at certain voltage the reverse current is going to suddenly go on increasing and this can be a problem or else a great area of interest where the two mechanism can be interpreted one is avalanche breakdown another one is zener breakdown so avalanche breakdown is normally for large voltages that is voltage of greater than or equal to 8 volts whereas the zener breakdown is approximately for the range of 4 volt in between 4 and 8 volt we can observe both there may be avalanche effect or also the zener effect that is the breakdown corresponding to that so in case of zener breakdown the very high reverse voltage is responsible for the quantum tunneling because the potential barrier between the two sides of the junction becomes very small so this facilitates the flow of charges due to the quantum tunneling effect whereas if we go for the avalanche breakdown then here some of the electrons are accelerated by the large amount of reverse voltage due to which enough energy is acquired to excite electron hole pairs so these excited electron hole pairs are going to excite some additional electron hole pairs and this goes on continuing due to which there is a huge amount of current these are some of the details about reverse biasing and the corresponding current or current density 
so in today's class we understood about the pn junction rectifying property based on the current density as a function of potential so from current density even we can get the current as both are related to each other so indirectly we have also understood what happens on biasing or on formation of pn junction so how the potentials are going to vary which indirectly explains this graph is also understood and with this the theory part which is important to understand some of the devices is completed so in the next class we will start with some of the devices like tunnel diode till then study well practice more and stay tuned for more such physics related content thank you